Last year at the AFS meeting in Bloomington, I presented using the diamond format on my current research project, which involves the painting of a railway trestle bridge in Sydney River, a suburb of the Cape Breton Regional Municipality in Nova Scotia. The trestle crosses the road that leads to the Sydney River Bridge, the first fixed link joining the east and west sides of the Sydney River. I apologize for the overuse of Sydney River in the previous two sentences, but such are the cards I am dealt. The road, the trestle, and the bridge were all built in 1957 and 1958 to replace the old single-lane bridge. Now, a bridge could handle two-way automobile traffic, and the rails would not cross the road leading up to it at grade. The late 1950s was a time of intense urban and suburban infrastructure building in Nova Scotia, when the post-war booms, both economic and baby, manifested themselves in the final great push from country to city, while the middle class blossomed and moved from city to suburb. Suburbia required the reconfiguration of exurban space. This reconfiguration included the Nova Scotia Rural High School Act of 1945, addressing the needs of students outside of the incorporated cities and towns. One of these schools was Riverview Rural High School, located across the Sydney River in the community of Cox Heath. Because of traffic patterns, for most of their overlapping existence, students had to walk or drive under the trestle to get to Riverview. This daily passage has rendered the trestle a landmark and a boundary between the urban and the rural, or the city and the suburb, and between Riverview and Sydney Academy, Riverview's downtown rival and, prior to the creation of regional school boards, the school from which Riverview students had been excluded. To cross this threshold was and is to enter Red Men Country. Bridge painting has been the more or less exclusive domain of the senior class of Riverview since 1981, when the graduating Tom Davis slipped out of his prom, ran across the Sydney River Bridge, and sprayed Class of 81 in the ten squares of the steel expanse in luminous orange spray paint. By rendering it anonymous, he effectively ceded ownership of the performance to the collective. As years passed, each graduating class reclaimed this space, contested on occasion by their rivals at Sydney Academy and, albeit less so, all the local high schools. Painting has gone through a range of tolerances by the community. As painting became more elaborate, the tenor of the conversation shifted from defacement to expression. It was a sanctioned school activity for a stretch of years at the turn of the millennium. Since 2009, there has been an official end to the practice, framed as an issue of safety and liability. It was a policy only fitfully enforced until October 2011, when the railway's present owner, Jacksonville, Florida-based Rail America, painted the trestle in metallic trim-clad paint. Rumors spread that it was a special graffiti-proof concoction, Within days, one could see flecks of red latex testing this hypothesis. The sense of proprietorship evidenced through the use of the first-person plural in such expressions as it's our time to shine and we rocked it extended beyond school lines to all the adolescents in the region. Enrolling this bridge into this larger folk group as an actor in community building, it is both medium and, in the most reductionist McLuhan-esque sense, message. One of the most prominent messages is memorialization. In addition to a roadside memorial tradition, the bridge is painted when a young person dies. In a reunion of former bridge painters, it crosses school affiliation, particularly when this affiliation has lost its immediate meaning. This happens alongside, and sometimes organized through, the now commonplace Facebook memorial group. Even among digital natives, the desire to express grief and loss on the literal concrete of the bridge is seen as a necessary step in the collective mourning process. Memorial trestle painting is symbolically representative of ongoing grief work, forming part of a complex with a Facebook page and the more formal markers of funeral and cemetery. The bridge differs from roadside memorials in two key ways, however. First, the trestle does not mark the site of the accident or death, marking the territory as dangerous. Its power comes from its communicative role. Secondly, the nature of painting traditions makes it an ephemeral memorial. By practice, a memorial bridge will go unpainted for about a month before a new message will appear. It does not have the same time depth as the seemingly intangible memorial pages. But students developed a means for making that message more permanent. It begins in May of 2009. Connor Timmons played soccer for both Sydney Academy and then Cape Breton University. 
he was killed in a road accident on the morning of May 9th, days before his 21st birthday. Within hours, a Facebook page was started as a site for pilgrimage and digital assemblage. The most recent post is from October of 2012. By May 18th, the trestle had been painted for Connor in the orange and green of Cape Breton University, which was a first. The bridge comprised a simple drawing of a scoring soccer player, Connor's number, and the adage, too blessed to be stressed, his motto taken from his active church life. This motto took flight, heretofore absent, it was used on the Facebook page that same day. When late June came and the time arose for the graduating class to repaint, there was much discussion over how to be respectful to Connor's memory while maintaining the tradition. It was decided to incorporate the too blessed to be stressed message onto the new bridge, albeit now in the Riverview colors, and to move it from the front of the bridge to the back wall, adding the names of other recent losses. Over the course of a number of bridge paints, this wall was spared even if it conflicted with the rival color scheme. New names would be added when appropriate. One painting by Sydney Academy began a process of recoloring the wall, and soon thereafter Riverview repainted it entirely. Then Sydney Academy highlighted its losses in blue paint. Almost exactly a year ago, when Rail America painted the bridge, the paint supporters in the larger, i.e. the adult community, lamented the loss of this wall. That this wall had been retained and maintained not through explicit policy, but through communal consensus was seen as indicative of the positive role this bridge could have as a medium of adolescent expression. On May 12th of this year, 2012, 15-year-old Matthew Gerard Fitzgerald and 17-year-old Fergus Tyler McKinnon were killed while out joyriding. The Facebook page created in the aftermath drew RIP trolls, those who deliberately target memorial pages for mocking the deceased and the grieving process. This, in conjunction with scathing comments to articles in the newspaper about the accident, made the internet an unsafe space for grief. Where the car came to rest quickly became a spontaneous shrine. But Ferg had been a painter. His name appears throughout my photo archive. A friend overheard a student say that because they couldn't paint the trestle, they would paint everywhere else. This included the sidewalks outside Sydney Academy, the playground of an elementary school, the back of a local call center, and the walls of convenience stores. The trestle as the consensus location for adolescent messages was demonstrated negatively. In its absence, alternates were found. So many alternates that, in late August, when yet another teen was killed, one of the earliest posts to her Facebook memorial page was from a family friend asking that there be no painting. They wished to avoid being surprised by their daughter's name in the landscape. The girl's name went unpainted, even when Riverview painted the bridge in September. In a paint largely orchestrated through Twitter, including warnings about the now vigilant police presence, the graduating class of 2013 re-established a bridge paint, so much so that Sydney Academy came by the next night to paint over top. What this means for the future of memorial bridge painting, however, remains unclear.